The Warriors faced a good Chicago Bulls team and Curry dropped 40 points on the Bulls. Let's have a look at how that unfolded. Early on, we get this screen, Draymond screening Steph's man. I'm gonna take the screen. This defender wants to come switch on to Steph, but his pal Looney is hanging out here. It's not often that he gets these high double screens, but works like gangbusters here. The second unexpected screen is enough to keep this defender just far enough away from Steph that he can launch it. This is a subtle play. So the oldest play in the Warriors book is the post split cut. So if Steph just started the post split now, he'd enter the ball into Draymond. More likely, Looney would come screen for Steph. Steph subtly changes the geometry of this. You're gonna see him just dribble over. You see he kind of waves and he starts pointing behind him. And I believe he's signaling Looney should come over here and he and Steph can interchange spots. Okay, and of course Steph goes behind the back. Here's the two pass, one, two to the post. And this time Steph can either take this pin down and get a shot from the wing, which he really likes, or he can go back door. There's the entry to the post. His man's completely blocking Steph from coming to take the usual split cut screen. So does Steph try to force his way through the brick wall? Of course not. Steph flows like water away from the pressure and just dives straight down the lane. The geometry of this is interesting that we have two non-shooters here in Looney and Draymond. With all due respect, Draymond's three-point jumper has been looking better this year, but basically he's not uh, a spacing threat. So somehow the Warriors are playing f five out with two non-shooters here. So like this guy's around just in case Steph comes around the screen. This guy's here because otherwise Draymond would just turn around and drive into the basket. And so that means that the Bulls have this formation where there's this enormous gap right down the middle. So Steph reads this beautifully. Nice pass, simple layup. Bielitsa setting this pin down for Steph. It's enough of a screen that he does get Steph ahead of Caruso. There's the pass. And you know, I could tell you all kinds of X's and O's. And what am I gonna say about this play? Caruso is right in Steph's face and Steph just shoots the three in Caruso's face. Like that's just, what, what can you say about that? That's just amazing. On this play, Caruso seems sensitive to the idea that Steph might take a screen over the middle, which is of course really common. And so he's playing Steph hard away from that screen. So Steph does this very elegant behind the back dribble. Suddenly he's going towards the right and look, it's his pal ready to set a screen on the right. Caruso fights very physically over the screen. He's bumping Steph and grabbing him and doing everything he can to throw Steph off. And I guess Steph got a little tired of it because he just throws him off with his left arm. I guess the referee thought that was a tie. He thought, yeah, maybe that was a push off, but Caruso was definitely not respecting Steph's personal space. So <laughs> after Steph chucks Caruso off of him, he just has this sidestep, pulls up. The Bulls, it, it seems like a kind of iced coverage, which is kind of weird. So Caruso was driving Steph away from middle, and then they had the big and drop position over here. And Steph feels that that's disrespectful because he can hit a three-point shot. Up he goes. Steph gets a pin down from Looney. The Bulls, of course, go over the screen because you don't want Steph to just get an open shot. Again, the Bulls' big is in drop position, which is an interesting choice. Cotton, we'll see if it pays off for them. The Bulls are just counting on Ball's superior defense and this guy's digging in from guarding Wiggins. And so, unlike many teams, the Bulls are just trying to get away with not blitzing Steph with the big. So for the moment, it looks like they get away with it. So it's just Steph on ball. The shot clock's running down. Eight on the shot clock. It's just a straight ISO. But Steph somehow does run by ball. This defender has an interesting choice to make. He can rotate to stop Steph's drive. But if he does, Gary Payton the second and cut behind him, GP2, it's not even a joke anymore. He's in the dunker spot where centers usually stand so that they can catch alley-oops. But here, that feels like I can finish this myself. So this slices right by this defender who steps up to rotate. That's just beautiful stuff. Big is trying to rotate over to get 
help for Steph, but it's just too late and Steph can go to the right and beat the defender to the basket. Draymond Green offering a screen for Steph to go. Lonzo getting a little tired of getting nailed by the screen. He tries to anticipate, but it looks like he's doing a good job anticipating, right? Here's Draymond at the screen. Steph is headed this way. Lonzo says, I'm gonna avoid the screen. I'm gonna beat you around the corner of the screen. And Steph says, have a good time over there. I'm going to the other side of town. This is a really evil quick crossover he does. Bam! And now there's not much the Bulls can do after that simple, beautiful move. He's got a straight shot to the basket. One of these guys has to rotate. Steph says, let me just try this little push shot. I'm going to make it so easy. You're going to wonder why people don't shoot this every play. Okay, this is the clay play. I know they signal it with a fist. I know you could give it some very basketball -y name, but you know, I've just gotten used to calling it the clay play over the last four years. So I'm gonna just keep on calling it the clay play. One man comes up to slip a screen for a high pick and roll. They get a down screen from somebody who then themselves gets a pin and screen. In this case though, intriguingly, it's Kavon Looney who's getting this pin in. So. In the vanilla version of the clay play, this person is someone who can shoot a three-pointer, and that's why it's so wonderful, because then you get this possibility of an open three-pointer. So there you see, wow, if, if Kavan could shoot a three, this would be a beautiful outcome, but he can't. The Warriors clearly want this to happen on purpose. So this is gonna flow directly into Kavan feeding Draymond, and then it's going to flow into a triple split here, which I'll explain in a second. But anyway, this play is weird because you think you could just get a triple split anyway. But I can't help but wonder if this is in preparation for maybe if you had a seven foot guy who could maybe punish this kind of switch. You know, some guy who's been injured and could dunk really well. So maybe in that situation, they could feed the post and this guy could spin and just try to dunk it. I don't know. That's just speculation. Okay, so there's the feed. And this particular triple split is out of the post and we've got three guys. And in these triple splits, one person always dives to the basket and then one person always gets some kind of down screen and jumps out. So here, Steph is using his buttocks to screen for Andrew Wiggins, who's going to dive. And then Kavan is going to come over and set some kind of screen for Steph. That's the triple split. There's Wiggins. He actually does seem free for a second here. But I think Draymond just thinks it's too congested. In the meantime, the Bulls have definitely been confused. Wiggins' man is cutting through. This Bulls defender is just hanging out in the corner. He seems oblivious to the fact that Kavan Looney now has a free screen to set on Lonzo Ball. It looks like he's going to wipe out Ball. And Steph is going to take the screen and be free. That's what happened. Sweet. Steph's been in the gym. It's just going to drive, get a slight angle on this guy, who is not a small guy by any means, and he's going to just power through him. I mean, it, he's come a long way from his rookie season when, you know, Steph couldn't, couldn't power through anybody. He would bounce off people, but now he can drive through people, which has really opened up his drive game. Here, he's going to get the contact and just finish right through it. Looney coming up to set a screen for Steph. Gonna take the screen, right? So Lonzo, as usual, tries to anticipate the screen and Steph is just gonna hit him with a really evil move. He's just going to dribble across his body. But left and then off rhythm, he's going to dribble it right back. So he's gonna do an instant crossover. So he's heading for the screen, right? Kabang! The Bulls doing this controversial thing where they're playing Steph straight up over here and the big is in drop position. He's still behind the three-point line. Am I, I mean, am I really to say that this is wrong defense? Because look, it's only an eight-point game. It's the third quarter. They, the Bulls have, I, I don't know, who am I kidding? I mean, it just seems weird to be playing drop defense against Steph because you're, you're conceding these pull-up jumpers against the guy who's the best in NBA history at that. But, you know, kabang. This play is interesting for a couple of reasons. So the first, I was just complaining about the Bulls coverage here. So you've got Caruso on Steph, but you've got Looney here is threatening to set this screen. Looney's defender, well, can you find Looney's defender? 
Luna's defender is here. So this guy is dropped way back and drop position to contain Steph's drive if he comes around the screen. I just don't get it. So I believe the league had kind of settled into that. Okay, so there isn't exactly a good solution because it's Steph. I mean, what are you really gonna do? But I think the league has, instead of having the big defender over here, they should have him right up at the level of the screen so that as soon as Steph Curry turns a corner, then two guys can blitz him. And then, you know, you take your chances. Maybe Draymond's man helps off of him, but really daring for the Bulls to be trying this drop coverage on Steph. Anyway, so that's the first thing. The second thing is that Looney is setting the screen this direction. Steph, in fact, tells Draymond and Looney and the whole world where he wants to go. He's going to extend his arm and point over there. Like, I want to be over here on the wing where it's open. So you might say, isn't that a bit bold of Steph to be telling the world that he's going over here to the side and that he wants to pass there? Caruso can just follow him, right? Well, so two things have to happen. So first, Draymond has to realize that's what Steph means. Second of all, Looney has to realize that's what Steph means. And that's even more important because instead of setting the screen at this angle, Looney's going to come around and reset the screen on this side of Caruso. And if Looney is screening like this, then Steph can go to his spot and Caruso is going to think, oh, I can just follow him and he's going to wham himself right into the screen. So that little rescreen from Looney is the whole key to this play. He's still pointing. He's like, okay, I'm telling y'all where I'm going and I'm going to do a little interpretive dance to the soundtrack of Frozen. Do you want to build a flare screen? There he goes, and he just told the world. He's going this way, Draymond hits him with the pass. It's just a beautiful, subtle little play. And Steph, what are you gonna do? This defender was dropped back. I mean, this is the scheme. Draymond's up here in this super high post or delay spot, whatever you wanna call it. And so here are the three people doing this triple split of one person dive, one person come out and get the pin down. In this case, Steph also does this little ring around the rosy with Andre. That's something he used to do with Clay all the time. They do this ring around the rosy. Andre ends up diving. Yelitsa knows what's going on. He sets this pin down screen for Steph. There he goes. Russo's just in flyby mode. He's going to try to contest this, time it up, and not hit Steph. And Steph, a teeny little ball fake, open three. Close three. Okay, this is a high pick and roll with Bielitsa. The Bulls big is still in drop position. At least he's not all the way back where he was before. Now he's dropped to above the three-point line so he can meet Steph on the other side and challenge a three-point shot. So here he is. The big has come all the way out to meet Steph. Ball is going to try to recover back to Steph. So in Steph's own special way, got ball recovering to him. He's got the big still on him. One of these guys probably needed to recover to Bielitsa, or if they were super aggro, they could send Caruso to guard Bielitsa. This is pretty far behind the line, but the man can shoot a three and does. Quick high screen, Steph comes around. I think the Bulls don't even want to be dropped this far back, but this man is at least coming up to meet Steph. And here we see the, the downside of playing up. And like I said, there is not really a perfect solution or even a good or even an adequate solution to guarding Steph in the pick and roll. But the Bulls have tried this far drop and then they tried this uh, high drop. So it's pretty high up. And the problem is now we have no cushion between the big and Steph. So he can just go faster and he's strong now. So he can use leverage to get around people and take the bump and keep on going. So here he is, he just gets like a quarter of a step and then now he's got inside position and he's just going to power through this big. And I like the combination of the power and the delicate bank shot. <laughs> that is elegant. Another high pick and roll, Otto Porter Jr. Stuff coming up, but the Bulls, do they try this deep drop? They tried this high drop. Now they're just going to give up and say, all right, we're just gonna blitzy, okay? And I don't really know why they're bothering to do this. They're down 20, six minutes to go. I mean, why even pull out something new? But that's what they do. Otto Porter Jr. sets the screen and immediately slips. His defender doesn't care. He's now bent on double teaming Steph up high. That means Otto Porter Jr. can slip down the middle. The geometry of this is awful for the Bulls. 
This guy's guarding Draymond. This guy's guarding Poole. So Steph is pretty used to being double teamed. Throws in the delicate little pass over to OPJ. And there's literally no one to stop him. It's a three on two. So there's definitely an advantage. Somehow Steph ends up being the lucky winner. People definitely really want him to hit the round number of 40. So he says, fine, I'll do it. The bench trying to come through here. We've got the Yosemite Sam. I'm a rootin' tootin' three shooting man over here. We've got some kind of high step. I'm going to guess this is Andre because he likes having this kind of crazy little wiggly high step thing he does. Kaminga bringing a new twist to it. He's kind of waving his towel around like he's gonna, I don't know what you call the dance. It's like a aerial floss or something. I don't know. Andre doing his I'm prancing through the dandelions dance and and in all of these festivities one man is totally paralyzed by Steph's greatness and that's <laughs> we just have one he's he's stuck in Yosemite Sam I'm rootin' tootin' three shootin' guy he's just like in the same position while the whole rest of the team is continuing I think people are gonna leave the arena and he's just gonna be still in this position I, I hope some medical personnel will attend to him 